the essential eight method is that device. It's our telescope, it's our binocular, so that we can see something afar off that we're trying to achieve with clarity. I promise you, you are going to notice so much progression and it's gonna almost feel like you're flying towards your goal. Welcome home family, you are in the Inspired House. I am your host Desmond Davis and today y'all, we have a banger for you. I am pulling the curtain back on what I do and how I educate and coach and today's session is going to be the key session that you need, the key episode that you need to start living a successful life. How does that sound? Right? If you feel that you already have a successful life, then family, you can just turn up. You can just tune off. That's cool. If you feel like there is no more room to be any more successful, to 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 build any more memories with your life, to draw out more meaning, to create and find more purpose. If you feel like you're tapped out on all those things, then this is not the episode for you. Let me just tell you right now so you don't waste your time. But if you know that there is more opportunity for meaning, more opportunity for fulfillment, more opportunity for success, so that when you close your eyes for the last time, you can look back on your life journey and say, I had a life well lived and I died empty. Then I promise you, this is about to be one of the most powerful 20 to 30 minutes you spend. So for just a few minutes, I wanna talk with you about the Essential 8 Clarity Method. I want you to say with me, I want you to say with me, I want you to say essential eight clarity method. Okay, some of y'all were mum mumbling and murmuring and I don't like that, but I'm gonna let that slide because we're gonna go through eight ideas and you'll have opportunities to speak it and say it with your chest next time, okay? So this method is what I use as my foundation for my coaching, for how I help businesses and organizations. It's this whole idea that if we look at our life if we look at our life as a boat, a ship, and the destination we're looking to get to is an island, and that island is called Success Island, Fulfillment Island, whatever you want to call it, and you see as you're in this boat, there's like this speck, this, this land that you're like, I feel like I see something there, but it's hard to see from afar, and you need something to help make that picture more magnified and clear for you to see. And if you only had that device, you would be way better off. The essential eight method is that device. It's our telescope, it's our binocular so that we can see something afar off that we're trying to achieve with clarity so that we can make the right move at the right time. So this method is built up of eight core ideas and we're gonna start with our first one, which is, hey, Inspired House family, got some exciting news. We are doing a giveaway. That's right, we are giving away two Samson Q9U microphones. These are amazing content creation, broadcasting and podcast mics that have XLR capability as well as USB-C capability. So you can plug it into a amp or you can plug it in directly to a digital feed like a computer and it has headphone jack capabilities as well. It's the microphone that I usually use when I'm doing podcasts or content creation and that's what's making my sound sound so crispy. So if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these microphones, all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed, turn on notifications, and in the comment section, let us know what you plan to do with the microphone. Are you going to drop a podcast? Are you getting into content creation? Maybe you just want to step up your professional setup at your online job or your remote work. Whatever it is, let us know in the comment section. And once we reach 100 subscribers, we will draw two names randomly and we will announce those folk in our next video. But in the meantime, stay inspired. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. We're going to start with our first one, which is personal progression. Oh, this is so good, y'all. Personal progression. Now, check this out. Personal progression is the commitment. You hear it? You hear what I said? It's the commitment. It's not the hope. It's not the wish. It's not the want to. It's not the maybe let me get back to you and I'll let you know. It's not the let me check my schedule, then I'll get back to you. 
It's the commitment to self-improvement, spiritual growth, and personal development by setting and pursuing personal objectives, enhancing one's skills and knowledge, and deepening one's faith slash spirit. I'm going to say that again for those who may not have been listening. Personal progression is the commitment to self-improvement, spiritual growth, and personal development by setting and pursuing personal objectives, enhancing one's skills and knowledge, and deepening your faith and spirit. Y'all, this is so good. This is so good. Like, what I'm giving you right now is a clear category that you can then start to compare and contrast things that come into your life that you can rightfully define or decide if it helps build your personal progression. Oof. Can you imagine how good and how much time you'll save if you take the time to build this skill set? Now, I want you to catch this, though. It is the commitment to self-improvement. It's making a promise. It's making a vow. It's committing yourself to this journey of, I am not going to close my eyes for the last time, staying the same way I started. I am going to build myself up every way possible and imaginable. I am going to improve how I communicate. I'm going to improve how I think. I'm going to improve and build skills, hone in, and really flesh out and flush out my personality so that I am putting forth the best possible version of myself. And the way we do that is by creating personal objectives for ourselves. We start this by planting the seeds of possibility. Are you listening? And watering those seeds and taking care of that ground so that our best possible selves can blossom. Oh, this is good. This is good, man. So now you know you're in the inspired house. So if we were to define personal progression as a room or somewhere in or around the house, this would be our garden, y'all. Here in our inspired house, we view our personal progression garden. And I want you to visualize this with me as an open and nurturing space for personal growth and self-discovery and the cultivation of new skills and mindsets. The things that move our emotions back then don't move our emotions now. The skills I depended on back then, my ability to talk my way out of stuff, to even possibly manipulate, I don't view those as skills no more. I view those as deltas that were bringing me down. Now I've developed new skills, consistency, positive communication, transparency, integrity. I've built new skills like execution. I've done and I'm continually doing the work of bettering who I am. How I respond to conflict is not the same way I used to respond to conflict. Why? Because I personally progressed. Now I'm not saying my garden is the nicest garden in the world, but compared to where it was before, You'd swear up and down I got a green thumb because the way my garden looked before y'all, terrible, short-tempered, self-absorbed, condescending, fake, a people pleaser. It was just all bad. I was just all in disarray. I was a kind, well-spoken, well-put-together mess that if you just took and, and looked just a few layers deeper, you would be frankly frightened but starting there has so many connections to the other seven categories that we're going to talk about that it has to be first committing ourselves to being better in the other seven categories has to start with the commitment of bettering ourselves if we're not coming in with the commitment we'll never hit the seven or at the very least we won't be consistent with it so that's number one personal progression that is our garden of the house. Now, whether you want your garden inside or outside, that's up to you. But we're going to go to number two, and that is a health, and that is, and that is our health harmony. Now, our health harmony is the prioritization of physical wellness through exercise, through a solid diet, 
in overall stress management. Now, if we were going to define this as a room in the house, you can probably already guess what room this is. It's the gym, y'all. In our inspired house, our gym is helping us achieve vitality, achieve an active and healthy lifestyle. Now, let me pause for a second. When I say active and healthy, I'm not saying having a six pack and being 0.001% body fat, which is that even a thing? I feel like if you have 0.01% body fat, you're probably dead. I don't know. But the point is that we are doing the work of being disciplined with our body. Here's the, here's the thing to consider. You can have a 25 year plan on what you're going to do with your life so that you can look back and say, I lived a meaningful life. I've touched generations. I've set my kids and kids' kids up for success. They're going to want for nothing. And that's all well and good. But if you're not taking care of your body, the question is, will you live to accomplish even a third of that? There's a, there's a lot of people out there with great ideas and things that they want to do, but their body can't hold up. Their heart is straining to work. And they don't even know the finish line is getting pushed closer and closer and closer. I don't mean to sound dark, but family, I'm trying to make a point. That for us to achieve a life we've never had before, it's going to require clarity we've never had. For us to achieve a life we've never lived before, it's going to require clarity we've never had before. And being clear on where our current body state is, is so important. Because where our current body state is and our ability to get it to a place that's considered healthy just might be the deciding factor on if it's a mission success or a mission failure for our goals. That's what I'm actively working on, family. I'm checking the things that I'm eating. I'm intermittent fasting. I'm going to the gym. Another thing that falls under our health harmony. You ready for this? Going to the doctor. Getting a checkup getting a physical, getting exams, and making sure you're good. Do you know if you're iron deficient? Are you lacking in vitamin D? All those things and more might be reasons why you're not as healthy as you wanna be. If you're a man, do you have low testosterone? Is that why you're struggling to get up in the morning? You always seem tired. Look, I'm not a medical professional or a nutritionist or nothing like that, but I have come to learn the value of investing in those type of things because it's, because it's letting me bank years that I was afraid I was potentially giving up and losing. And the only way I got clear and properly understood where I was at health-wise was because I made a commitment to focusing on my health harmony. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get to number three. And this is our mental mastery, y'all. I, if you don't realize by now, I love alliteration. So all of these words, the first and the second word are always going to have the same first letter. It's just, you might, you might as well just get used to it, y'all. I love alliteration. It's my thing. Um, I think it also just works for frameworks. So number three is mental mastery. Now, this is the emphasizing of mental health management through mindfulness, emotional intelligence, and coping skills that produce, that produce resilience and emotional well-being. So I want you to consider your mental mastery within the Inspired House as our library. And you, my friend, are the lead librarian. Is there lead librarians? Isn't it just the, the librarian? I guess if you're like a big enough library, then you're probably the lead librarian. If you have multiple librarians, then right? That might be a sign of something. And I think it's really important to talk with somebody. So let's just say in this case, you should be the librarian, period. You are the librarian. You run your library. And any good librarian understands it's their job to manage the content within their library. Oh, that was good. I'm going to say it again. Any good librarian understands it's their responsibility to manage the content within their library. So within our library, we're studying on things about emotional intelligence. Within our library, we're taking time to practice mindfulness, noticing and paying attention to our thoughts. And here's what's cool. Our mindful mastery works well with our health harmony and our personal progression. 
So let's say you're one who needs to build and focus on your spirituality, your spirit man. If you're me, you're a Christian. You have a relationship with Jesus. And so now for you, you're building your skill set of establishing and understanding better who you are, how you need to present yourself. You're working on your body and your temple. So you went from personal progression to health harmony, and you're working on being fit. You're working on being what the Bible calls a vessel of honor, right? Someone who presents themselves and carries themselves in a way that God would be proud to partner with. And then you're taking it a step further and now you're managing your mind. You're not just going and thinking whatever. Whatever thought that comes isn't the thought that just stays. You see how these things work in conjunction? Ooh, this is good. You're taking the time to do, again, because I come from a Christian perspective, I'll spit it to you like this. You're taking the time to take what the Bible says, every thought captive. You're, you're taking and observing the thoughts that you have, the thoughts that you think, and you're sorting them. Just like any good librarian sorts the material within their library. They know, right, based off of What's stamped in their book, what's stamped in the lib- what's stamped on the, the book, if this book belongs in their library. Family, some of you got books in your library that do not belong to you. Some of you got books in your library called doubt that you just let be displayed prominently in your library. Some of you have books called ignorance that are stocking your shelves. You have multiple copies of ignorance in your library. And not one book on emotional intelligence. Not one article read. Not one class taken. Not one YouTube video watched to understand what is emotional intelligence. And probably because of that, when the crap hits the fan, you have no way of managing and dealing with hard times. So probably there's no books on coping skills in your library. Do you see why we're talking about how we manage our mind, how we manage this library? Because when we take the time to manage and stock our library with good things, going back to the Bible that says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are lovely and of a good report, focus, think, meditate, study on these things. Stock your library with so many of these things that when life starts lifing, you can go and look and go into the coping skills section and be like, here we go. Here's the book. This is the memory. This is the thought. This is the strategy, the framework that I'm pulling from to help me not only get through this, but conquer this. It's our mindful mastery, y'all. And when we work on our thinking, it will eventually lead to the emotions that we have and developing healthy emotions, not getting stuck in sitting in certain emotions for a long period of time. (coughs) (coughs) Look, I consider myself to be an emotionally intelligent person. I do pretty well at kind of gauging the vibe of a room whenever I'm talking with people or whenever I'm walk into a space and there's other people there. I also have a pretty solid grasp on the things that I'm feeling in any given moment, but it wasn't always like that. I was at one point a really angry person. I was a very unconfident, kind of anxious, self-doubting type of person who went out of his way to be liked, who went out of his way to try to make people laugh and not to make people uncomfortable, right? Because I couldn't bear that emotion of of tension. I couldn't bear that emotion of uncomfortability where it was beyond cringy. It It was beyond uncomfortable. It felt like it physically hurt. And that was because I didn't build my emotional toolkit. I didn't have emotional intelligence. I didn't have emotional well-being. So if I got into an emotion, if I got into a, if I got into a negative feeling, I could stay there for days. I could stay there for weeks, put a smile on my face. And some of you are the exact same way. Know you're pissed off at somebody. You see them (laughs) feeling away. Okay, our fourth one, y'all. This is our financial foresight. Again, I told you I love alliteration. This isn't just the management of finances, and this is something I had to learn. This isn't just the management of finances, but this is the strategic 
management of finances, putting together a plan, doing your darndest to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what dollar goes where and what you plan to do with those dollars and cents and how you can make it work for you. This is all about planning, saving, and getting to a place where you can eventually invest. And those things lead to security. Those things lead to prosperity. Those things, if we do it right and God willing, leads to generational wealth. That's the goal for me and my family, what me and my wife are working towards, is how do we invest in such a way that we set up our baby girl and our future kids and our kids' kids with such an amazing starting point that there's no way they can fail. Now, let me get to, I'm sure you're asking, Desmond, you've been on this theme about rooms in, in, in our house. What room is this? You can probably guess this is our safe. You might be thinking, Desmond, what, what house has a safe in it? An inspired house. You like what I did there? You like that? You like that? I thought that was funny. You thought that was, I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny. Now, just how, now for our personal progression, that was the garden and that was a place of nurturing and building and our health harmony was the gym and that was a place dedicated, dedicated to physical health and vitality and our mental mastery was the library and that was a sanctuary for mental health, resilience, emotional intelligence, and learning. Our financial foresight, that's safe. It's a secure place where financial being, financial well-being, excuse me, is protected and nurtured. Y'all, this is good, man. Like, family, we are giving you game right now. We are helping you build a solid structure for your life. If you're not, I hope you're taking notes on these things. If you're not taking notes, you need to pause, rewind, and run this back and take notes on these things, y'all, because we are helping you out OD right now. Our fifth, our fifth topic, our fifth insight, the fifth part of the essential eight clarity method is our family fabric. I want you to notice, though, we went through four different parts before we got outside of ourselves. And that is not by mistake, that is by design. There needs to be an emphasis of building and shoring up who you are and what you have access to and what you can offer so that you can show up that much better for your family. So our family fabric is all about strengthening family bonds and dynamics through shared support and quality time that is intentionally used to build a cohesive family structure or unit. Don't you just love the detail of this, y'all? So I figured this is a given, but I'll just tell you anyway, the room of our inspired house when it comes to the family fabric, that room of the house is obviously the living room, y'all. That's where we're gathered together, we're playing games, or if you're at my house, we're hopping on the Nintendo Wii, and I'm cooking you in Wii Sports, we bowling? You, what you talking about, bro? What you, yeah, what you talking about? Strikes 24-7. Curve on crazy, right? I'm just, yeet, just whipping that thing, right? That's what's going on in the family room. That's where we're spending time together. We're making memories. We're watching the movies. We're doing the things that a family does in the living room. And we're strengthening these bonds. We're having meaningful discussions. If you celebrate Christmas and it's Christmas Eve, maybe you get together, you know, my family, what I grew up doing with them, and, and my cousins and aunts and uncles is we would always go to my Pap-Pap's house. I was really fortunate to have a lot of my family, especially on my mom's side, all live in the same town. And we would get together on Christmas Eve and we would all do a secret Santa and be in the living room and watch a movie, eat food, share a gift, all of that. It was, I really miss those times. But that's our living room. So within our essential eight clarity method, the living room, it's the heart of the home where family bonds are nurtured and cherished. How are things looking with you and your family right now? If they're good, that's great. How can they be better? If they're not good, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there opportunity for reconciliation? Is there opportunity for healing? Is there opportunity for a rekindling of relationship? If you're a husband and a father like me, how are you managing your family, bro? 
Are you being present? Are you not available? Are you setting aside time for your partner? Are you setting aside time for your kids? Do your kids know who their family is? For example, I don't live in the same state that I grew up in, and so I'm working on being more intentional. We had a family reunion earlier in the uh, in the summer of last year, and we brought our new baby girl up there or down there to meet family. And yo, it was so powerful. My heart was so full being able to bring my baby girl and introduce her to her family. Okay, we gotta move, we gotta move. Our sixth point is relational richness. I just love saying that, relational richness. Don't that just sound like a, a smooth music group your auntie used to listen to back in the day? Going to the club, coming back late night, singing songs about relational richness. Let me stop, I'm so sorry. Sorry, what's wrong with me? My bad. We're going to define relational richness, cultivating meaningful relationships through understanding, empathy, and communication to foster deep relationships with others. Now, in some cases, sometimes, and within our relational richness, it can be even more powerful than sometimes our family fabric. This is the work and the energy we put in to build meaningful relationships with others. How we, how we create our friend group and how we socialize, how we network, how we do the things that give us connections outside of our family dynamic. Now, with that being said, you can foster relational richness with your family too. Because even though we don't want to admit it, we all have people who are family, but then we have those folk who are our family that might as well be our brothers, our sisters. They, 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 they just get us and we get them. We're like this. So you can have that within a family dynamic, but this is specifically talking about those who are outside of the family because this covers that social area of how we make friends. Now, if you're paying attention, you might be wondering, okay, Desmond, well, what part of the house is the relational richness? And y'all, this is the patio. This is the porch. This is the stoop. This is that spot, that kind of outdoor spot. So it's not necessarily in the house. It's not necessarily the family dynamic, but it's close enough. It's right at the door. And it's that space where you're hanging out. I can't tell you how many summers I spent with my boys or, or with my friends who come over and we're just hanging out on the porch, kind of just watching life happen, cracking jokes, looking at, especially during the summertime, as we get closer to the NBA, as we're usually around the time of the NBA finals and we're at the house watching the game, then going out on the porch and just kind of seeing, you know, who's doing what. That patio is an inviting outdoor space that's meant for cultivating deep personal relationships and ideally broad social connections in a relaxed and welcoming environment. You know, right now I work with a lot of older men at this school that I'm doing a uh, practicum and internship at. And there's a couple who, they, they love to talk about their back patio, their back gazebo that they got that has all the grills and the music and it's just the whole vibe. And that's where they go to socialize, to talk about life, to kick back and watch the game. It's that safe haven. It's that space. It's welcoming. It's, it's designed to how they like it. I'm working on getting my own gazebo in my own little spot where I can set up and chill. Right, maybe for you that's a shed. Maybe it's your basement that you finished. Maybe instead of a patio, it's a car. And it's you hanging out with your friends in the car, whatever that is. The idea is we're focused on creating relationships that have deep personal meaning and strong social connections. So are you tracking with me on how all of these things play into one another? And are you starting to see why I said if you can get these things down, you're going to be able to have the most successful and meaningful life possible because you're shoring up a lot of the core categories. What we're doing here at the Inspired House, y'all, is we're giving you language. And when you have the ability to articulate something, you have the ability then to see something. And when you can see it and you can say it, 
it's way easier to possess it. Have you ever heard the story of the Himba tribe in Nambia? If not, just please listen, You're gonna, it's gonna be really powerful. There was a study that was done on this tribe a while ago and the different languages they have for different things. And they didn't actually have a word to describe the color blue. Now you might say, Desmond, what's the big point there? Check this out though. Because they didn't have a word to describe the color blue, they had a hard time differentiating the color blue from other colors when they were shown it. You might be saying, okay, Desmond, what's the point? The point is this. Language is so powerful that if you don't have the words to describe it, sometimes you may not be able to fully see it or understand it. Sometimes the most painful emotions are the emotions we can't give words to. But that's why you're with us in the Inspired House. Because if we can give you language and if we can give you concepts and understanding regarding how you can view life, you'll be able then to speak to where you might be falling short, the blind spots you may have, and then you can properly work towards shoring up those weak spots so that we can have a successful and meaningful life. You may not be saying thank you right now, but you're welcome. Okay, our second to last point is one of my favorite because I love this word so much. Number seven is our joy journeys. Joy journeys is the conscious decision to pursue activities that bring relaxation, happiness, and fulfillment to us outside of our professional and personal responsibilities. Now I use really specific language with this because I want us to understand and acknowledge that sometimes our joy journeys really are work. It is the pursuing of activities that bring a sense of relaxation and happiness to our lives. When I think as, I think for us growing up as kids, we were able to just activate it and do things that were fun because we didn't have as many responsibilities in most cases. As kids, ideally, our only problem should really be concerned about the friends that we're making or our ability to play or doing homework. We ideally shouldn't be bogged down with the thoughts and concerns of adulthood. Where our next meal's coming from, clothes, are the lights going to stay on in the house, all of that stuff. That's not things we're supposed to be focused on. So we can just tap in the fun. So this room within the Inspired House it's obviously gonna be our rec room. I appreciate Joy Journey so much that even my office, the studio that I'm in, if you looked at the, the previous episodes about mental health, you saw that I was in my den, my rec room, where I have space to create and, and be creative and coach, but right over there is our pool table slash ping pong table, where I can relax and rejuvenate and go in the recliner and hang out or or start a fire and just chill and just enjoy. Bring people over and play games and Uno, right? Which you don't want to play with me because if we play Uno, the Davis house rules, they will have you questioning your faith in humanity. So I'm just, I'm just saying. But it's this idea of creating a casual space for relaxation, for hobbies, for leisure that ideally is going to foster a sense of joy and play. So I'm going to be honest with you. I struggled where to put this one on the list. And for some people, your list might look a little different. You might put joy journeys up higher, and that's completely understandable. The reason why I put joy journeys where I have them is because for a lot of the clients that I work with and coach, I see there is sometimes this issue of overemphasizing the joy journeys, overemphasizing the the hobbies and the me time and the play time and it's coming at the detriment of our personal and professional goals to the point where we don't have any success. We only play, 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 play. We consume, 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 and it's not healthy. But ideally, if we're working with the essential eight, we know that joy journeys have its proper place where we're tapping into that leisure, that fun, that ability to pursue hobbies that take our mind off of work, 
because we've actually engaged in work. You know what's interesting about these essential eight is when we take the time to build these out and pay attention and give language and study and, and really view our lives through this type of framework, it'll give us opportunity to be better at planning and organizing our lives. So then we can give ourselves to actually planning and scheduling out the fun. And when we do that, we'll be less likely to have fun just randomly interrupt our time of work. To have fun randomly interrupt our time to do something else. We're properly scheduling out that recreational time. And so because of that, that works with our mindful mastery. And we can go to the front of the library and look at the schedule that says, cool, tonight at 7 p.m. I'll have recreation time where I can play my game or I can have my friends over. We can play Uno or cards or spades if you really bout it. And so because I know, oh, this is so good, because I know I have the recreation time, because I've paid attention to my joy journeys, and I've scheduled those things out, I then don't have to worry about those thoughts bleeding into my work time, into my time to be one-on-one -on -one with my partner, and we're working on our communication or just spending time together. I don't got to be thinking about PlayStation in the back of my mind because I know that time is scheduled out and I'll be able to get there. And so because I know I've set aside time for that, I can show up fully over here. And then I don't feel as guilty when it comes to recreation time because I know I've been on top of my personal progression. Oh, this is so good. I've been a part, I've been on top of my health harmony. I've been on top of my mindful mastery because I... Because I practiced financial foresight, I budgeted the money, so now I'm not going into the negatives to get that new 2K or to get Call of Duty. I know my family's good, and I spend time with my family. And through my time with my family, I learned that either one of my kids or one of my cousins has an interest that actually lines up with my interests. And they like comic books, so now I can bring my cousin or bring my kids or whatever to when I'm doing relational richness and bring them to the comic book store and share my love of comics with my friends and with my cousin. So I can then totally sit back and enjoy my joyful journeys without guilt. Because I got those other things I, in proper order. I got my house in alignment and in order. Y'all, is this good? Is this helping you or what? This is helping me just talking about it. I love coaching on these things, y'all. And last but not least, it's our career climb. In, the, in our inspired house, this is our office. This here is my office. This is a focused approach to professional development and advancement aimed at achieving our career goals or our entrepreneurial goals through skill enhancement and strategic opportunities. So it's not just going to work. This is going to work and doing work with purpose. We're doing the work we're doing now with the end goal in mind. When we tap into this career climb and we get our figurative metaphorical office in order, if we're working a nine to five, we're giving our best work and we're viewing our work through the lens of how this is going to set up the next step within our career. We're no longer that employee who doesn't fully understand all the benefits that come with their job. You know that person. They don't understand their health benefits. They don't understand the things that they have access to. Maybe, maybe they get instant access to a federal credit union or something, but they would have no clue. Maybe they get discounts because of the job that they're in and they have no clue where they got discounts at professional development opportunities, they probably have no clue that they have a professional development fund. And so because of this, they miss out on opportunities because they can't see opportunities for what they are because their vision isn't in proper alignment. They don't have their binoculars properly adjusted to see the success island across the ocean. They don't have the language. Remember that story? They don't have the language to see an opportunity for what it is. But that's not gonna be you. 
because you know within your inspired house, your office is now the center of professional growth and strategic career advancement. If you're an entrepreneur, you kind of already have an advantage in this because you have to think long term about your business. And for my friends who work a nine to five, we can potentially fall victim to the trap of just coming in, punching a clock and going home with no plan, with no step two, step three of what we're trying to do. And before you know it, we fall back on a default plan of I'm just here to get my years in and retire. Which if that is your plan, that's cool. Hear me, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But what I am saying is, if you're saying that's your plan because you've never given anything else any type of thought, you never looked at how you can leverage the skills and the things that you're learning and the skills that you have on your job and the training that your job is giving you in ways to better your life and build your life and open up and create more opportunities for yourself and your family, then retirement really isn't your plan. It's just the only choice that you have. And in there lies the stark difference. So family, I need to be transparent with you with the little time that we have left. And we're going to cut and edit this, so I'm not even sure where I'm at time-wise. If I'm over time, I apologize, but I need to stress this. We make the career climb last because everything in our world and in our society wants you to make that first. Our society very much establishes and, and centers identity around the work that you do, your career, your job. If you meet someone and you ask them to tell them about, to tell you about themselves, they say something like, hey, I'm Desmond and I'm a coach. That's the first thing you got to say, what you do, your job, not your interests, not your family, not why we bumped into each other at an event. Your job is your main identity. That's not good. That might be the sign of imbalance within your essential eight. But if we can take these essential eight categories and really study these things and build an understanding about these things, It'll help us build a more holistic plan, which you can do. And if you don't believe me, pull out your calendar, whether it's on paper or on your phone, and revisit the plans that you make and start giving them one of the essential eight titles. Oh, I'm going to the movies. Cool. That's a joy journey. I'm going to the movies with my friends. Ah, that's a joy journey and relational richness. I got to talk to my tax people. Okay, that sounds like financial foresight. Oh, Sundays I go to church. Cool, that sounds like the personal progression. I love it. You see how you can schedule these things out? And within a, and within a one, maybe two week time period, if you can hit all eight of these, I promise you, you are going to notice so much progression and it's going to almost feel like you're flying towards your goals and using the language that we've developed to describe these essential eight will help you to properly categorize and understand what is good for you and what may be bad for you. So family, I am so excited to see you take these essential eights, make these your own, use these, share these with your friends, use these for your teams, and build out a future worth being excited for. But before we go, in the comments below, or on our social media, or YouTube, wherever you can, please drop which one of the eight are you going to focus on or which one of the eight do you feel you need to focus on building up right now? Maybe you're strong in like seven of them, but you know there's one. Or maybe you're strong in four. You need to get the rest of them. What are those that you need to work on? I would love to know because that will guide and direct the content we make moving forward. So please, please, please drop your comments below. If you're not following, why not? Subscribe to our channel, like this content, like the video, give the podcast a thumbs up. However you're taking in this content, please like and follow and do us a solid and share it with somebody. But if you can only do one, please comment below and let us know which of the eight insights spoke to you the most. Hey, this was a great family meeting. Get out there and crush it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.